threes a game. So they want to continue to knock those down here, obviously. And then freeze, free throws. They want to get to the line, force Oklahoma to defend with fouling. And take away the strength. Oklahoma's got to obviously defend the three-point line here tonight, Chad. They've been really good defensively, and especially in San Diego, taking away the strengths of the offensive team they are playing. This is Rashad Williams with a dribble handoff here to Lanell Martin Jr. Now Joe French trying to go to work. Milos Yuzan, the steal, hit ahead. Otega, Owe bangs one home. Defense creating offense to start. Yeah, so much length on the perimeter with this ball club. Williams buries a three from deep the other way. So Rashad Williams, this team, as Porter Morser said, they have four legitimate different level scores four players also that shoot better than 40 percent from three including williams shooting 42 percent but they're not all just threes or nothing all of them can put it on the deck as well you will have a little challenge with where the lines on the floor are the regular volleyball floor is still down in the gaslin field house so the basketball court is kind of taped off here let's look at this steal and bucket now this has been a theme for oklahoma in the month of november points off turnovers there's yuzan getting away and away chad you know you and i have talked a lot about it before the game how productive he is in terms of his scoring either it's transition points or offensive rebounds like against usc he always finds a way to score efficiently. Jalen Moore gets fouled on his way to the bucket. Sooners will inbound. There's Porter Moser. He came to a volleyball game here at the Caslin Fieldhouse. His first season as head coach. Looked around, saw the names up in the rafters, such as Gar Hurd, who we understand is going to be here tonight, Alvin Adams. And he said this could be special with student involvement. It has become a special night already as John Hughley scores. McCullum with a steal. Jalen Moore gets the lay in. What a start for Oklahoma defensively, Brendan. Ishmael Platt into the corner. Milton lines one up. No. And Moore the rebound. Long pass to John Hughley running the floor, and he's fouled underneath by Ishmael Platt. Oklahoma picking up full court and they're able to do that because they're putting the ball in the basket which allows them to get set up What a great play right there. You see athleticism from Moore Right here in Oklahoma's bigs and we saw in that last possession and I would put more in That conversation to this point. They run the floor really well. Hughley right there a rim runner Pine Bluff's gonna have to get back in transition McCullum with a deep three and it's good J.B. McCollum knocking down the triple. 32% from behind the line this year. Doesn't settle, takes good threes, and he makes just enough to keep you honest. Williams can't answer. Platt the rebound. Golden Lions get a reset. I feel like UAPB just kind of has to survive this initial thrust by Oklahoma, Brendan. Well, they've got to take care of the ball. That's first and foremost how you survive. French hits the fall away and a foul underneath i think they will count the bucket yes they will and we'll see who the foul is against might be the second on platt as he kind of discarded jv and mccollum underneath solomon bozeman third season as head coach at uapb last year they were 10 and 21 off to a good start this year four and four wins over champion christian southwest christian at central arkansas and over arkansas baptist that game against arkansas baptist he coaches against his dad eric who's the head coach there at arkansas baptist so would they uh, talk about that at the kitchen table or just uh leave it alone might have made thanksgiving a little interesting <laughs> huh? so for oklahoma tonight they do not have the availability of sam godwin that means in all likelihood we will see more of the young man we just saw check in that's luke northweather who places john hugley and you'll see jalen moore at the five sum when uh, hugley and northweather are not in the ball game and sam godwin just out with illness Hope to get him back ASAP. He's off to a very good start. Sam Godwin, but not available tonight. Yuzan, shot clock down to seven. Baseline lob Moore got fouled. He's trying to go up and attack the rim. He gets bumped by Robert Lewis. First on Lewis. And UAPB will drop back in that 3-2 zone. And they'd like to use it a lot tonight. They would be able to get into it, Chad. 
if the tempo was a little bit slower. So they've got a score to get in that. McCollum hits Otega away on a backdoor cut. Kind of slipped a little bit. We've seen that a couple of times under the bucket right there. Maybe a little moisture. Chad, the feeling here with, with the students right on top of the court. And obviously, the court is 94 by 50, but I'm sure out there to UAPB, it feels smaller against that pressure. Williams had to go up over Northweather, who impacted the shot. Sooners transition. McCollum jets the other way, but has it raked away out of bounds, and it goes off of McCollum and back to the Golden Lions. Boy, great play and transition by Martin right there. And that is so tough when you're backpedaling and you've got that driver coming right at you in transition, Chad, but what great hands in stripping it from McCollum. And we see part of that big-time bench that Porter Moser has already shown this year as Rivaldo Soares is in and Latre Darthard. They go to the bench with very little, if any, drop-off. There, there is not, especially defensively. This pull-up 12-footer rims in and a foul as Lanell Martin Jr. knocks it down and Luke Northweather knocked him down. So it's a three-point opportunity for the Golden Lions. Well, Martin, little mid-range right here. Transfer from Montana a year ago. This team's got a lot of seniors, only one underclassman that plays any significant minutes. So there's experience on this ball club. Martin, a guy that gives him good size out there on the perimeter. He's averaging about 10 points per night. Knocks that one down, the old-fashioned three-point play. We've got a one-point ball game. Yeah, this UAPB team can really score the basketball. It's at multiple spots. We've talked about the shooters that they have. Coach Bozeman's always had scores that could light it up. Speaking of scores, there's Milos Yuzan with the triple from the right wing. Now, Yuzan hasn't scored much yet, but he hasn't had to. He's been a terrific game manager, though, at that point guard position. San Diego, Chad, if you were out there, the two ball games, 13 assists, and just one turnover. Yeah. He had a nine assist, no turnover game in their win over Iowa one week ago today, in fact. That foul's going to be on Milos Yuzan on the air ball. That is the first on Yuzan. Two against the Sooners here in the opening half. See referee Jeb Hartness over there explaining things to Porter Moser, Jeb Hartness, Amy Bonner, Randy Richardson, our three officials in charge tonight. What a great environment. 15 to shoot. Dart hard with a steal for the Sooners. Dart hard around a defender off the window and in a steal and a deuce for Latre Dart hard. Well, there's that lack of drop off that Coach Moser has when he goes to the bench. And Dart hard. A 3 and D type of player. Linked right there. Good job of pushing the ball up the floor. Martin is off the mark. Oklahoma's bench on average outscoring opposing benches by 17 a game. This guy's been a part of it. Rivaldo Soros, though, off the mark with that one. Williams all the way the other way. Beautiful nice feed play. to Milton. They cash it in on that lay-in. Little dribble penetration. UAPB coming right back. Sooners by four approaching our first media stoppage of the night. 15 to shoot for Dart Hart. Lobbing it in. Northweather. Northweather will put it on the deck. Six to shoot. Nice little pass by Sorez. Yuzan can't land the three. And the rebound picked off by the Golden Lions. Lewis got it. Rashad Williams attacking Soares. And a reset here. Martin Jr. probes, fires. Rivaldo Soares for the Sooners the other way. No look pass to Northweather. It got tipped and then went off of Northweather and out of bounds as we go to break. Good Juniors and seniors. So for the Sooners, it is John Hughley back out there. Jalen Moore is also back out. Soares, McCollum, Dart Hard, some of the early shooting numbers. UAPB 4 of 10. Oklahoma 6 of 8. The Sooners have already knocked home a pair of threes this evening. Shot clock down to 15 for the Golden Lions. Hughley knocks the ball away from Lewis, who has to retrieve it. Now time's getting short for the Golden Lions. Williams dribbled it off his leg. Milton tried to bail him out. 
Pretty good defensive set for Oklahoma so far. Milton, a pull-up. No, it's Suarez with another rebound. Well, UAPB, they're going to basically space Oklahoma five out, zero in, sometimes four out, one in. And it really, Chad, is going to come down to individual defensive assignments. Contain, contest, block off. Column and Suarez out top ten to shoot. UAPB changing defenses. We're seeing some full court, little zone right now. Column slips right through that zone but misses. And Lewis has the rebound for UAPB. And I think they would like to play a heavy dose of that 3-2 if possible. That ball thrown away. Lewis could not retrieve it. Golden Lions turn it over on average only about 13 times a game. Solomon Bozeman said when we got a four guard lineup such as this feels like he has a chance to win every night and as you mentioned Porter Moser calls him Corvers Kyle Corver type players guys that can really shoot it from deep UAPB certainly has that on this roster they can make the threes they got three guys who are 40 percent or better from three-point range and make at least one three per game well and collectively I mean, they're shooting 39 percent as a ball club as a team, and I guess if you have four guys, Chad, if you're any, you're any good at math, that shoot over 40%. That's I'm not. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> Dart hard, lines up a corner three, knocks that one home. Yeah, better ball movement, that possession against that defense, Chad. Whoever's out front, the point guard position, they have to have good body language, be active, and you have to get the ball below the free throw and get free throw line, get it flat along that baseline. Jalen Moore takes that one away inside. Here's McCollum. Lob it over the top for Hughley to score it. Sores with the drop down. Yeah, and that's smart by Oklahoma because Pine Bluff doesn't have the size inside to match up necessarily with Hughley and even more. You were talking about Suarez, Brendan, the value that he brings. It's plays like that. He's only turned the ball over how many times this year? Four, four, times, four in times in 129 minutes. So you get great defense out of him. You get mostly very good decision-making in the half-court offensively. And you get ball security. And, and you get that like right that. there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's absolutely. Suarez right in the middle of it, as you said. Yeah, you, obviously, you and I see, have seen Oklahoma a lot already, already this year. But I love watching Suarez play. And he's the type of guy in this league, this level, in the Big 12, every team needs. And he embraces that role. He's a guy, Chad, he gets two points, fine. If he scores 20, fine. You're still going to get that type of effort out of Suarez. He's one of three players that Porter Moser brings off the bench that was a starter at his previous destination. That's Dart Hard, that's Ugly, and that's Suarez all coming off the bench. What a luxury that is. Really eight starters. I mean, that, that's, that's your eight, and that's a pretty solid eight at this level of play. Dart Hart cut off. Suarez bumped. Yuzan wide open, but makes the extra pass for Moore, who cashes it in. Well, Yuzan will get credit for the assists, but that was just a simple play. Suarez forces help. You get the ball moving, a couple of extra passes. Moore wide open there in the corner. This is an 8-0 run for the Sooners. 13-2 overall. They've made four of six from three-point range tonight. Long three out of the hands of Martin Jr. Skims into the hands of Hughley. Defense has been more sound and solid for Oklahoma. Everything has been kept in front here in the last few minutes. Great ball rotation. Suarez got it. Oklahoma rolling. 11-0 run over the last two that we've seen as a trend for them this year. They're 10 buckets. They're 10 made baskets. You have nine assists. So... Ball moves with this team. The right decision most of the time is made. 10 of 13 from the field. That is 77% for Oklahoma so far. I think they like shooting in the old gym. There's a foul as Dart Hard commits that on Lionel Martin Jr. Well, that drive right there was a little more like what we saw in the first three or four minutes 
from the Lions. Ball movement and driving it. And credit Oklahoma with good defense as of late, Chad, but the ball hasn't moved as crisply, and so they've been settling for jumpers and long-range threes. Lionel well, Mountain Jr. is a transfer from Montana, native of Flint, Michigan, and he is perfect at the foul line this year. 20 for 20. That stops an 11-0 run for Oklahoma. I think Solomon Bozeman added some really good pieces in the offseason through the portal. And yeah, he did. And Martin being one of those. He's pretty skilled, has good IQ. You know, they've had scorers his first two seasons. Sean Williams in 2021-22 was second in the SWAC in scoring. And last year, Sean Doss, 17 a game, led the SWAC in scoring. Well, and that's why you can go get a guy like Joe French or... Milton because they know Bozeman is going to set them up in situations where they can be successful offensively Jalen Moore cleans it up lays it in Sooners by 15 Jalen Moore solid starts made both of his buckets so far the point-blank range usually with another rebound great job right there by Dart Hart. again That's what I was talking about earlier. That's just taking care of your individual defensive assignments Sorez and in there to Hughley one-on-one -on -one, tough matchup for Jerry McLeod and he fouls him and there's some foul trouble for the Golden Lions Ishmael Plett has three so he's over on the bench for Solomon Bozeman and it's already kind of front court by committee for the Golden Lions yeah they're already built at least their roster is geared towards that anyway so when you take Plett out he's probably their best interior defender at 6'8", good rebounder. You take him out, and that just makes it that much tougher for the Lions to contend with Oklahoma's size. That is six fouls against UAPB, so the Sooners will be in the bonus on the next foul and for the remainder of the half. 15 to shoot as Usain glides down the baseline. Oway, count the basket, and a foul. The thing... And you saw this, Chad, last year, even as a freshman that you in. He understands what's potentially going to be there before the play ever starts developing. So you get a defender out of position. You saw him drive the left-hand side, eyes up, and he drove it. And as soon as the help came, he knew he could dump it down to Oway right there. Just really good vision that Yuzan has had since day one arriving on the Oklahoma campus. And Otega Oway cashes in, converts the old-fashioned three-point play. You see Luke Northweather back in. Otega Oway now with five. Seven different Sooners have scored. Eight have played, seven have scored. So balanced. But that's the way this team's been from the get-go. Milton curls off the screen and lands a floater off the window. That was nice. Yeah, very smooth right there. Dart hard off the mark with that one. And a rebound to Lionel Martin Jr. So look, look at the extension Oklahoma gets defensively on Pine Bluff's offense. And really shove you out of what you want to do. Williams with a tough shot. Yuzan was all over him. Sooners quick hit ahead from McCollum. Northweather traveled with it. Shuffled the feet. Porter Moser saying, go ahead and shoot that big fella. Tell you what, a coach tells me that. You, you would never have to tell me <laughs> that. Well, they would have never had to tell you that once. <laughs> Again. Top dog. He, he's more of a Lloyd Noble center guy, but it's good to see him make an appearance here in the Caslam Fieldhouse, Brendan. And it always reminds me of our good friend. That's right. Coach Stokes. And, in fact, on the last broadcast we did here at McCaslin Fieldhouse, Coach Tubbs did the broadcast with me. It was so great to have him. Well, Ismail Plutz back in with three fouls, and he converts that. So they're taking a little bit of a risk, well, but they got to have it. Yeah, absolutely. You're at a point if you're Coach Bozeman, and you can't let this thing get away any further. And with their ability to score, if they can just get a couple of stops, they, they can get this under 10 and have a little momentum. Look at French. Beautiful just laying that in as he was able to roll around Northweather. And this is a tough matchup for Northweather defensively. You notice a couple of times here recently, those Pine Bluff players have recognized that, and they've taken it right to them. 12-point Sooner lead. Northweather, little ball fake, hesitation dribble. Oh, he kicks it out. Wide open look for McCullum. No. 
And there's French with a rebound. And your point about UAPB and their ability to score. They've got three guys out there who have all scored at least 30 in a game. So there's some power pack potential. Here's Trajan Ware. Shot clock down to 10. French calling for a screen. Doesn't use it. Drives Northweather, and Northweather fouled him as he blocked it. I both know Porter Moser could coach both ends of the floor, but he told his ball club, you know, coming out of the timeout, there's not going to be any reason for us to have defensive balance and get back. We need five guys to crash the glass. And USC did not check O way out. And what a great play. You know, athleticism and nose for the ball to go get it, but with the touch to secure it to make sure it went down. And the other thing was for Otega Owe specifically, he had been called for a foul in that exact same situation on the previous trip. Now, it might have been a disputable foul, but he went right back in there after it and created the game-winning play. Good run here for UAPB, Brent, and this is an 8-0 spurt for the Golden Lions to creep back within 10. Yuzan left wide open, off the mark. Jalen Moore tips that, outraces everyone. McCullum drills it. Pretty good defense, but Oklahoma able to get the offensive rebound. And when that happens, the floor is broken. And so if you kick it out immediately, you're going to get those wide open shots. And you saw right there, McCollum, another thing that's great about him, everything is smooth within the realm of the game, rarely gets sped up. The second made three from McCollum. French misfiring on the three the other way. Golden Lions just one of nine from three-point range here in the first half. Here's Moore. And a back down came McCauley. A little left-handed jump hook lands. Nice. Showing you his arsenal. Yeah. A lot of versatility with Moore. But we figured we would see that multiple times tonight. Porter Moser said that the sidelines and baselines are a little hard to see, and that's what happened there to UAPB. I'm still carrying Jalen Moore. Yeah, you can't dive down or dig on Moore because you have McCollum with him on that side. As you mentioned, he had a second three of the game. So defensively, you're isolated there. But you, you saw Moore, the skill set, slow down. I always love to see guys go with that right shoulder and that offhand. Sooners have made six threes in this half. Five different guys have made them. And there's Hughley who lays it in. Hughley was four for four from three-point range in the win over USC last week. And How do you guard him? Yeah, and remember when Oklahoma separated themselves earlier in this half, oh, a nice play right there drawing help, it was because he got a heavy dose of those bigs, especially Hughley, touching it inside. you got to do that again right here on this possession. 15-point Sooner lead, 6.15 to play. Tega Owe putting it on the deck to the glass with the left hand. Seven for Otega Owe. Tough shot there. Milton got himself trapped and got bailed out with the foul call. And I think they're going to get Hughley. Here's that last possession, Chad. Now, now watch this burst. I mean, it was just boom, blow by right there. And always so strong. Once he gets the angle, even in league play, because he, he's a man, that body that he has, that frame, he gets that angle, you're not going to be able to hold him off. But I love love how he's playing and his decision making. Otega Owe is shooting nearly 70% from the floor this year. He's fourth in the Big 12 in field goal percentage. And I don't know if this will mean anything to people, but, you know, I... I a lot of times look at, you know, how are scores getting their points? So how many field goal attempts does it take to, to get your points? And Owe coming into tonight, 90 points on just 56 field goal attempts. And so that means he's taking good shots, you know, the offensive rebounds, the steals, the transition points, and then the driving, and then the improved three-point shot. He's now, what's that, five of five on the year? It's unbelievable how well he has shot it this year. That That is a perfect five for five from three-point range this year. He made one three all last season. And that's a bucket and a foul as Hughley once again fouls Milton on a lay-in. Well, Tego always 
does us a solid as we're bragging about him steps right up and knocks down a three and this continues to be so efficient offensively while maybe more importantly turning into an elite defender Porter Moser told us the other day he said he has earned this the way that he is playing it's come from hard work that's earning it and the old-fashioned three-point play there good by Kylan Milton UAPB trying to hang around Sooners put together these spurts and then the Golden Lions answer 15-point advantage now McCollum dishes to Moore can't convert Platt has the rebound Trying to find Platt stolen by Otega Owe. Lob for Moore, and he cannot quite finish it. Golden Lions have numbers here. They can take advantage. But instead, they turn it over. And now the Sooners have numbers. McCullum. Oh, beautiful ball fake, but lost it. Moore is there to fix it. And the Lions that dodged a couple of bullets. Well, more missed two bunnies, and, and then they come down and turn it over. That's an opportunity. You've got a 15-point game. You have to make those plays or worth something when Oklahoma helps you out. That was the Sooners' largest lead before the bucket by Lonel Martin, Jr. So 15-point cushion. We approach the four-minute media timeout here at the opening half. Rivaldo Suarez. Kind of probing that defense and turned it over. Here's French for the lay-in. And it's blocked. Otega always soaring from out of nowhere. How about a more three? And a foul will be on, I believe, an ability that he has. This will be the fourth game in which he's played this season. And Rivaldo Suarez to the foul line. Now Cooper, a, a lot of promise and upside. A pretty much a consensus four-star recruit. And honestly, in a lot of other situations, he would be playing or part of the rotation. He's, right now Oklahoma's improved roster and they're a good ball club. You've got eight mostly veterans that uh, Porter Moser is rotating in. There. But it's not, it's not, Cooper not playing much has nothing to do of where he is right now as a player in terms of a freshman. See him out top guarding on this pressure against Trajan Ware. Under four minutes left in the first half. Sooners have equaled their largest lead, 17. This is French. Stops in the paint. Sooners cut him off. Only five to shoot here. Williams trying to go to work against Yuzan. They reset the shot clock there, and now it has expired. Part of it was those defenders one pass away were up the floor. So UAPB could never be comfortable. And that's just textbook defense, sound, solid, with very good athletes. Sores lines up a three. No. And they feel like that's going to come around. Dart Hart has not shot it great so far this year. That, that's another bright spot. No, that's right. And Dart Hart is a proven three-point shooter over his career. Dart Hart tonight has made three. Sora is looking for his first. Ten to shoot for the Golden Lions. Dart Hart with solid defense. And Martin Jr. falls out of bounds. And that's more good Sooner D. Nine UAPB yeah, turnovers. And I know it's interesting to you, you know, because you know I love defense. For a guy that wasn't an excellent defender. Well, you played for a coach right. who could coach a lot of defense. But right there, see, the other thing Oklahoma's doing this year is they are there on the catch. So, in other words, when the ball moves, maybe a guy comes off a screen, the handoff right there, Darhart is right there. And then they're there on the catch, they gain control of the offensive player, and then they're sound and solid. Once it, and that's how they extend you out. And we talked to Porter Moser about this a couple of days ago, but can you defensively take away other teams' strengths and, and force them to change what they want to do offensively a little bit? And this team looks like it can. Well, Pine Bluff's one of nine from three-point range right now. You're talking about a team that has made, I mean, they played Minnesota, 
They've played on the road at Ball State. They've played some quality people and had success shoot the basketball. They make 11 threes a game. Oklahoma, not only have they only made one, they've only taken nine. They're, they're not allowing them to get the threes up. Five to shoot. Use in. Finds a wide open Jalen Moore, and that one is good. Jalen Moore knocking down his second three of the night. Guess you call that a stretch five? I think so. Sooners threatening to hang a half a hundred on him here in the first half. So Oklahoma's made eight threes in the first half. Dart hard, Soros, Yuzin, Moore's made two, McCollum, and Owe. They've all made one. Multiple threats from downtown. 20 point lead, the largest of the night. Colin Milton going to go to the foul line. Colin Milton's a good story. Mainly a bench player last year. He's a transfer from Western Kentucky. Spent 2020 2021 there. But 37% three point range in SWAC play last year for Solomon Bozeman's team. Has a career high of 42 points. So he can really score at times. And it's a 25 point effort against Arkansas Baptist. Yeah, I think they're going to have a really good year in the SWAC. And I've seen them picked all over the place, mostly in the middle of the league. I would be surprised if they're in the very least upper third and maybe even better. Jackson State went on the road and won at Missouri earlier this year. Here's Dart Hard. And it rims in. I think this team may ask to play here again with the kind of shooting performance they've had. And I wouldn't blame them. Well, it's good to see Dart Hard knock a couple of those down. As you mentioned, very good three-point shooter in his career. In fact, 38% over four years. So he's proven, but only one of eight from the long range out in San Diego. Martin, that's a tough shot as Cooper had good position on him defensively. Say what between Martin, French, Williams, and Milton, this team they can go. Yeah, absolutely. They can improve on this end of the floor. Here's Cooper. And Milton has the rebound. Minute 15 to play in the opening half here at McCaslin Fieldhouse. They're going to honor many past Sooner basketball players who played here at McCaslin Fieldhouse. Last season for basketball here was 1975. There's Martin Jr. following his own miss, but can't land that one either. Plett plucks it away. And a foul on Yuzin. So Milo's Yuzan picks up his second. And that is seven against the Sooners. Oklahoma does not foul a lot. So you talk about the win over USC. USC was a team that got to the line about 27 times per game. Uh, they got a couple of players in Isaiah Collier and Boogie Ellis who are probably going to be top 15 picks. And Oklahoma did not let them make a difference from the foul. Line. Well, we, we kind of talked about a little bit earlier in this game, Chad. What this team is really good at is taking away the strengths. And you look at the Iowa game. Iowa is prolific offensively, shoots the three well. And they were 4 of 23 from three-point range. Ortega Owe, offensive rebounding. McCollum's three is off the mark. And out of bounds off the shooter. I mean, isn't that what defense is supposed to be? Take away what the other team does well and, and make them try to beat you a different way. And that's another thing I think with this team that's encouraging. I mean, they've consistently done that through six games, no matter who they play. Milton, a good crossover, gets held by Otega Owe. So more free throws for the Golden Lions. Yeah, they're much more successful when they've tried to get downhill first. And, and it's much easier said than done against a very good defensive team in Oklahoma but right now when the Lions are driving it they're driving with strength the fans are right on top of it it's you think about some of those old big eight arenas you may have played in a couple back in uh, your playing days you got Hearn Center at Mizzou Ahern at K-State I did play in Hearn Center and that was that thing was built straight up and down. Even the upper levels, when you walked in, you just felt like 15,000 was on top of you. Oklahoma State had an oldest Gallagher, Gallagher Hall, Hall yeah. before they added Iba. 
to the name and refurbished it in the mid 80s. Second free throw, good. That quiets this crowd. All students, nearly all students here tonight, but they have really shown up. They got the message, and Porter Moser applauding them as he came out from the locker room before the game. Final shot of the opening half. 18 points, Sooner lead. Balanced scoring. Sooners have shot 59% and forced nine turnovers. Away. No. Dart Hart's tip, but Moore can't quite follow it. And the first half is in the books here at McCaslin Fieldhouse. 52 34. Sporter Moser wanted to play this game here, Brendan. It has been a great success so far tonight. Really cool to see all those guys, especially Gar Hurd. To be back here. But yeah, Coach get, Ted Owens was here as well. Co Coach Owens. I hope I can catch him after the ball game. But uh, now this is, I mean, this is really a cool idea. And I, and I would assume it's obviously been a great success so far. They've continued to do it. Take a look at our Mathis Home starting five. Mathis Home, the official furniture sponsor of the Oklahoma Sooners. You see same five who started the first half with Colum Oway. Models use in. John Hughley in there tonight as Sam Godwin not available due to illness. They will have it back. And Jalen Moore had that strong first half. 14 points. Two of three from three-point range and six rebounds for Moore. And there's what Moore can really do. Up the elevator shaft and down. Uh, he just, it, I mean, We'll get a replay of that. Those, those eyebrow, <laughs> eyebrows were level with that rim. That's like a pogo stick. And it wasn't because he was doing a pull-up. He jumped that high. Yeah. Little triple penetration, and Kylan Milton scores again. He's having a good night. 14 for him as more attacks the other way. Let's look again here. Brent. Yeah, underneath out-of-bounds play, the, the last possession, and just a little bit of separation. Good screen from the big body in Hughley, and... All you have to do if you're using just throw it up in the air somewhere. He'll go get it mm. Boom. Right there Brendan. We better get that man a flight suit and tether him to the shuttle if we're going to be going on spacewalks that's, like that That's like uh, you at the age of seven on your little tykes Goal now I can in, bring that little tykes goal down. It's dangerous and This man is having a night And that's the thing he hasn't had to A little discussion here Jeff Hartness is over. Explaining something to Solomon Bozeman, the UAPB coach. In the meantime, Moore calmly knocks down the free throws. Twisting down the lane, Lionel Martin Jr. Nearly turned it over. JV McCollum, a good job to force him back beneath the basket. Yeah, and McCollum has given up a size advantage right there to Martin, but notice how McCollum just stay strong. Didn't allow him to push him any deeper in the lane. Shot clock is at 14 here for the Golden Lions. French and Platt out there. Platt playing with three fouls, setting the screen. Down the lane goes Rashad Williams off the mark. Rebound picked up by Platt. He goes right at Hughley and missed it. And a blocking foul on Otega Owe. He was slammed into Kylan Milton. That'll be two on Otega Owe. Well, third opportunity off the two offensive rebounds. And then right there, Owe, a rare time where didn't move his feet, got out of defensive position right there. I think this Arkansas Pine Bluff team, the the way they play offensively because they have so many guys that can attack you and score I think this is going to translate very well For coach Bozeman obviously they always go play an extremely tough non-conference schedule So environments like tonight when they played Minnesota Ball State, etc Will help prepare them for SWAC competition. Yeah, and if that didn't do it They still have games at UConn Gonzaga and South Florida and Plep gets free and punishes the rim Yeah, and they're they're physical. This is not you know sometimes at this level of Division One, you have guys that have length, but they're slight. These guys aren't slight. They're physical. Hughley is off the mark with that. Ishmael Plett played at Oral Roberts a season ago. Jalen Moore will be called for the foul as he knocks Lionel Martin Jr. down. 
Well, regardless of time and score, this ball club's going to continue to attack and play hard. Goes right by Hughley right there. Defensive rotation not there on the weak side. Plett with strength. And remember, he got those three fouls early in the first half, and that really affected them. He's the most equipped defensively to handle the size of Oklahoma inside. But if your five men can put it on the deck like that, you're going to be a problem given the conference play. Ten to shoot. Williams will pull the trigger. It's off the mark. And Oklahoma has taken away the big weapon for UAPB, averaging 11 made threes per game. They have one tonight. Meantime, McCollum transitions for two, and he'll go to the foul line. McCollum did a terrific job not walking. So here's Yuzan. This was kind of a tough catch in traffic. I mean, see that burst right there? And then French comes over, but the slide adjustment. It's like a running back maneuvering around an individual tackler right there. McCollum, I mean, he's a jet. And great finish from him on that play. Just with that ability to get downhill, how, how much does that bring to the table? And you, and you see the burst. I mean, when he, he turned the Jets on. And we saw that with Owe on that drive in the half court, if you remember, when he went to his left. Just that quick burst. Milton attacks the rim again, and Otega Owe will pick up his third foul. So now we see that floor spacing and dribble penetration causing some problems. Well, they space it really well. And I know on broadcast, we use that term a lot, but there's a lot of teams that aren't great at it and, and understand it, depending on where the ball is, what your teammate is doing. But this Arkansas Pie Bluff team under Solomon Bozeman, they understand spacing well. And that's allowed them to have some opportunities here in the second half to put it on the deck and drive it to the rim. Milton now six of nine at the foul line. We see Latre Darkhart replace Otega Owe, who has those three personals. Students making some noise up above the basket into which Milton is shooting. The silencer. 20 point sooner lead. Milton's got 14. Make it 15. Here's Hugley posting Plett right up to the window. No. And he was standing on the baseline when he rebounded. Intelligent by Plett. I mean, Hughley had the angle and just missed it. But once Plett got a little bit out of defensive position, all he did was wall up and stay strong, understanding his foul situation right there. Yeah, he's played with three fouls yeah. since about seven minutes into this game. Milton attacks and slams another one down. Now you don't see that a lot against Oklahoma. No ball movement and just a straight line drive and a dunk right at the rim. Jalen Moore, how about a straight line drive? He'll get to the foul line for a pair. And watch Milton right here. Oklahoma not as sharp defensively coming out here the second half as they were the first. So Milton splits the seam right there again. These guards, especially for Arkansas Pine Bluff, I mean, they, they are also physical. And that's what you get a lot of times when your roster is, is older. We talked about only one player that plays what I would say meaningful, significant minutes that's an underclassman. Jalen Moore converting the first. He has 19 points and six rebounds tonight. Rivaldo Sorez back in replacing Hughley. Jalen Moore has bettered his previous Sooner career high. He had 18 points in Oklahoma's win against Iowa. He has 19 here tonight. Moore picks up this loose change. They run McCollum one step over, and he knocks it down anyway. McCollum's got a dozen. He's made three threes. When you watch him shoot the basketball, no, I mean, he's squared up in his feet. He goes straight up and down. There's, there's no fading. There's no rushing. Really shot it well here tonight. Back and down goes Martin Moore. Fouled him. 
Here's McCollum. Three of five from long range tonight. Watch this ball fake. Defender retreats. He keeps, creates that space but doesn't rush it. Feet set. Just smooth and in rhythm. J.B. McCollum. Dozen points. Four of eight from the field. He's got four assists. Only one turnover. Another wonderful night that you're coming to expect from him now. Yeah, this makes plays. You know, Sienna a year ago, he's he's a 16 point four assist player. And he had 12 games for them a year ago where he had five or more assists. So, so he can have those games like Yuzan where you know, he's going to drop six, seven, eight dimes as well. And he's become that guy at the late game situations. Okay, who's going to go make a play? Who's going to make a shot? He was that guy against Iowa. He was against USC, didn't make the shot, but Otega Owe tipped it in. And, and that's a great point because, as we all know, in Big 12 play, you come down to the last three or four minutes. Sometimes you can just throw out the first 36, and what happens is it comes down to stops, and then you hand it to somebody on your team and basically say, go make the play. That's what everybody does. McCollum turning into that for Oklahoma. Moore bounces up to claim the miss. The Sooners get a reset. Dart hard. There's Yuzan. Tend to shoot. Yuzan pulls up for three and rinses it. Well, he has the ability to do that. You look at a year ago, Chad. He shot 41% from three-point range as a primary ball handler. So in other words, there wasn't a lot of creation for him. But now that you have a guy like McCollum, he's going to get more of those type of looks where he can be away from the ball. Now that was just him making a play. 11 made threes for Oklahoma tonight. Soares quickly the other way to the bucket. And French has the rebound for UAPB. 23-point lead for the Sooners. Martin nearly had his pocket picked and then had his shot blocked by Moore. It'll stay on this end. Oklahoma making the three. Athletic, and you can tell as a team they're connected. And so this is a good, this is a good Oklahoma team. It, they're they're legitimately a very good basketball team right now. What you hope is these students get even more excited about, them. then you have a little bit better student attendance in the Lloyd Noble Center. Sooners by 23. Finals Yuzan back out there. John Hughley trying to post and foul. That's it. Mismatch, to say the least. The 6'5", Jerry McLeod, and the 6'11", John Hughley. McLeod picks up the personal foul. This is going to be the battle for UAPB, that inside presence. Teams are going to try to exploit that. They've had foul trouble tonight. Plett has played through that. And now we're seeing that McLeod is having to do so as well. But I think, you know, centered around Plett, when they get into league play, because their perimeter players are physical and strong. They've got some really beautiful play right there. Yes, there was. Using a great feed to Hughley. But, but I think that they'll be fine as they get into league play. This is great for them to have to learn how to defend and combat size and athleticism of a power five team. But seven assists and one turnover for Milos Yuzan tonight, Brendan. And a block shot a right block there shot. on Martin. So last three games, 10 to one assist to turnover racer. Here's a pick and roll right there. So you have it overloaded on the left side. That allows a true two-man play with Yuzan and Hughley and then the block by Yuzan defensively back here on this end. Sooners have four blocks tonight. Williams putting it on the deck. Tried to draw the foul. Wanted to initiate the contact with Owe. And here comes Hughley. Owe wide open. Plenty of room to operate and score with the left. Game has slowed down for him, hasn't it? Yes, it has. And, and typically, you know, physically and as a player, your biggest jump and progression is year one to year two. And, and Owe was really good down the stretch a year ago. He got better and better those last nine games he started. But he has really improved at both ends of the floor in his sophomore year. And French knocks down to three. And with Owe, 
last year he was really competing just to get minutes and, and felt like sometimes maybe he had to do too much or more than he was capable of as a freshman this year he knows the minutes are there and he's just comfortable and there's another lay-in for Hughley well, just like we've talked about where the Lions have been better offensively when they've moved it and driven first. That's not, that's not a good shot. Oklahoma has been better in the half court when they've been getting those touches to the bigs inside and worked inside out. Yuzan tried to leave that. He does for Owe, who will score again. Ortega Owe into double figures. Four Sooners in double figures tonight. You like that, that little dish? That was, a, that was a pass back to Owe. I think Yuzan thought he was closer behind him. Fortunately, Oklahoma was able to come up with it. We're going to call a foul on Hughley as it looked like Milton maybe had uh, wrapped an arm around Big John. That's three on Hughley. So Hughley and Otega Owe with three fouls apiece for the Sooners. We're going to see Yaya Kesa replace Hughley again. No Sam Godwin. Porter Moser told us we're going to throw Yaya in there a little bit, let him operate, see what he's got. Well, there will come a time when Kesa. You know, he's battled injuries, he's at Missouri, he's, he's had him here, but he's got enough experience. There's going to come a time where you're going to need two, three, four minutes out of him in a Big 12 game, in a big situation. Foul at midcourt. Callan Milton will pick that one up. And you know, to some people that may not sound important, well, that's not that big. It is a big deal. Sure it is. Because at that level, in this league, every possession is so precious. Yeah, and that's, I mean, that's why you have 13 scholarships and Oklahoma's developed the depth. If uh, that minute helps you win a game and that winning a game helps you make an NCAA tournament or get a better seed, then everything does make a difference. Platt is going to check out for the Golden Lions. There's Yaya Kata. Fourth game in which he has played this year, as you mentioned, had the year at Missouri with a knee injury. Played a couple of games in conference play for the Sooners last year. McCullum lines one up. That's good. I would say, when a guy's made four, Chad, and we talked about Oklahoma defensively, always there on the catch. I mean, you've got to find him. That's way too easy. And on the other end, it is McLeod sticking it in for the Golden Lions. Four different Sooners have made at least two threes in this game. Owe had it stripped away by Lewis. Yeah, better job finding the call him out there. Dardhart splits the seam and scores. Last night, North Carolina beat Tennessee. Rick Barnes Ball Club last night. Man. Yeah. And you got some. The Prov Providence is 6-1. and one. They've got a nice ball club. Got some games going on in that Big 12 Big East battle tonight. Got Creighton and Oklahoma State. Got Kansas hosting Connecticut tomorrow night. Defending national champions going to be at Allen Fieldhouse in that Big 12 Big East battle. Lewis lines one up and drops it home. That's only the third made three for UAPB tonight. They average 11 made threes per game. Yeah, Lewis, that young, uh, that lone young guy as a sophomore that is in the regular rotation for the Lions. Really had a nice freshman year. They expect him to give them quality minutes as this season progresses. He averaged a double-double their last two games last year, and Solomon Bozeman said they feel like he can do it again this year. I think that's only the second time tonight we have seen the sideline come into play. Again, the regular floor that you see, the painted portion is the volleyball court for Sooner Volleyball, and then they have the basketball floor redone, retaped out there, but it is a little challenging to see the sidelines and the baselines. And Coach Moser told us he's expected that from both teams at least a couple of times while we're on the subject great job by everyone behind the scenes to get this game put on from facilities management of course Joe Castiglione sport administrator Marcus Bowman a part of that you see is the liaison with men's basketball they've done a great job getting this ready Offensive rebound by McLeod creates the reset, and that one is knocked home by Williams. So back-to-back -back threes made by the Golden Lions. Yeah, it's been tough sledding in terms of getting any kind of open looks, which you see right there. Ability to shoot from long range. Yeah, yeah, Keita had it stripped. 
Loose ball to Owe for the lay-in. Yeah, Cater right there. When you catch it, you know, those smaller guards, when you're a big, you have to be aware that they're coming down, digging down to take it from you. you got to be strong when you catch it inside. Milton turns and fires and knocks down another one. He can just score the basketball. Porter Moser is calling a time. Their last five possessions. Uh, not getting to shooters like they were. And so that timeout was about, hey, at no time, at any point in this season, now, January, February, do we relax defensively. And human nature, obviously, if you're Oklahoma, you're up 30. Your defense is not in front of your bench anymore. And human nature, sometimes you're going to relax a little bit. I bet you he gets them out. Reset defensively. Freshman Caden Cooper back in there. Beautiful shovel inside to Hughley, but it's stripped. Long pass to the running Lewis. It's intercepted by Owe. It looks like his brother playing in the NFL. Uzan's triple. Line it up and knock it down. Kind of oh, the way this game yeah, started. Winning plays from Owe. I mean, literally had one against USC, right? And then sprints back in transition. Like a defensive back recovering to catch up with a receiver and then leads the break. And that's one of those plays you see Uzan getting the ball more, at least scoring offensively. That's one of those away from the ball where Uzan can shoot in rhythm. But quick hands there by John Hugley forced that UAPB turnover. Oklahoma's forced 11 Golden Lions turnovers. Sooners work the clock a little bit here. Want to run a set? Hughley, screen and roll with Yuzan. Bucket and a foul for the big man. One of the things about Hughley at his size, and you see it when he shoots it around the rim, you see it when he shoots from long range, and you see it when he catches in traffic. Really soft hands. And so those bigs have soft hands. You know, if they could get any part of the mid on it, they're going to catch it. And then the other part of that, obviously, he's a big, strong fella. He's going to go up strong, but yet finish softly. That was an example right there. Approaching his first Sooner double-double is John Hughley. He's got 13 points and eight rebounds. And the lead back out to 31, equaling the largest that it has been. Milton he got that one. Yeah, he can really score. Yeah, he, he's, a, he's a guy... Chad, that once he gets one to go down, the rhythm is there. And even if you're solid defensively, he can make tough shots. Just first made three of the night. And the Golden Lions have made four threes in the second half after only one in the first half. Shot clock plays all the way down to 10 here. Using steps back and fires. Long rebound and... I think Owe was standing on the sideline when he touched it. Goes back the other way. We'll see Rivaldo Sorez back in, replacing Otega Owe. Very good night for Otega Owe. 16 points, 7 of 8 from the field. He's made his only three-point try of the night. Junior tried to back down instead of three by Lewis and rebounded by Moore. Jalen Moore, eight rebounds to go with his 19 points. Hughley muscling his way in but had it stripped. Martin got a hand on it. Here comes Milton for the conversion the other way. 24 for Milton. Rebound will be tracked down by Lewis. Yeah, that's two straight possessions offensively. Coach Moser will not love. Hughley doesn't do that much. Rushed it. And then right there, a quick three from Soares in transition. Jalen Moore sends that one away from Lon L. Martin Jr. Five sooner blocks tonight. And Hughley tried to put it on the deck, gets fouled by McLeod, and McLeod has picked up his fourth. 
Because we got to have the kids present. You got to have the balloon animals, right? Oh, is that what those are for? Yeah. <laughs> Most of them are just wearing them on top of their head. I would have been capable of just making the OU logo, I think, is about all I could do with those balloon animals. John Hughley continues his solid night. He's one rebound away from a double-double. 14 points, nine boards. Sooner shooting 57% from the field. And 13 of 27 from three-point land. Otega Owe is back in. Freshman Caden Cooper back to the bench. 28-point lead for Oklahoma. Now is it about keeping your focus, maintaining what you've done so far? It's been really good so far. Yeah, no doubt. It, it's about, if you're Oklahoma, it's about being clean. Going back to being solid defensively, playing it at an elite level without relaxing. Good containment right there by Moore. And then offensively, not having empty possessions. Make sure that that ball doesn't stick. And there's a shot clock violation against the Golden Lions as that shot did not hit the rim. That is 13 of you. But that's good officiating right there. But, but. So it'll be two free throws for the Golden Lions on the non-contact technical foul. And Williams took exception to that. Now this, this Pine Bluff team, I mean, they've got you agree with this? They've got a level of toughness to them. Right? Without question. I mean, Oklahoma has just have been playing well, and they're playing well again tonight. That's where you get the separation. But this Arkansas Pine Bluff team, you can tell, they got a little edge to them that will serve them well, certainly as they get into conference play. And the Golden Lions will get it. You see Jalen Moore over on the bench. And that non-contact technical serves as a third foul for him. So you've got three Sooners with three fouls. Hugley, Owe, and now Moore. French was on the sideline. Stepped out of bounds. Disallowed the bucket. Oklahoma by 27. And a turnover. Call him a little miscommunication. 11th Sooner turnover. Williams on the attack. Wiped away by Otega Owe. That is block number six for Oklahoma. Yeah, what's impressive there is he mirrors the ball, the right-handed shooter, and blocks it with his left hand. Owe. 6'5 or so, extremely athletic. Quick, a quick jumper. Tega always got two steals and two block shots tonight. Yuzan off the mark. Hugley swats that one back out for the reset. And Owe converts. 18 for Otega. You know, what's interesting, and maybe it's just me, it seems like when he makes a nice play on the offense or defensive end, the very next possession at the other end, he responds and backs that up. You said poke that away. Plett retrieves, though. Shot clock is at 13 for the Golden Lions. Plett, one-on-one -on -one against Hugh Lee, scores it. <laughs> Five twenty to play. Sooners comfortably by twenty-seven. Otega Owe mid-range game. What can he not do? He he just he's taken what's given, and the game has become slow to him. Now that last year he would have tried to find a way. You know, there's no way he could get to the rim there, but he would have tried that last year. Mm -hmm. I, I would just say I've got the space. I'm confident in my mid-range. I'll just do that. McCullum from way out there. And Platt with another rebound. Old Lions slowing it up a little bit. Well, Williams takes a quick three and hits it. That is his third made three. All of them here in this second half. UAPB finding much more success from deep in half number two. Otega Owe 
And off the hand of you yeah, play, right to French. That's a rare poor decision offensively from Ole. Heat check there. Retrieval for Plex. Here's Lewis. And he turns and scores. And Porter Moser wants a timeout. Well, without question, it's been a success. I mean, it, it's been fun, I think, even from our end. You get, I just think, you know, basketball, the, the fans need to be on top of it. And that, that's what creates a home court advantage is the intensity of the fans. And as a player, you feel it. I've, you know, I've been on both sides of it where it's you know, your people that are on your side. and But the other side of it, too, it's fun as an opponent to go play in these type of venues. And I, I think UAP, BB had really fed off it themselves. I mean, they've continued to play hard. They play with toughness. And I bet you if you ask them, they enjoyed coming to an environment like this where everybody's against you. I mean, if you're a team of any ilk at all, you actually can thrive on that. This is Max Kleins check who has entered the lineup. Max down a pair of free throws. Max, the native of Slovenia, spent last season at Houston Christian. Went to prep school in New York. And also the freshman, Caden Cooper, back in, snatching that rebound. Latrade Darthard glides for two. Looks like the Sooners are going to easily top the century mark tonight. Oklahoma averaging 84 points per game. Mark Jr. will bang his way to the bucket. Just the second foul against the Sooners in his half. Yaya Keita and Luke Northweather return. Going to be a nice round of applause here for Jalen Moore. 19 points and eight rebounds for him tonight as he checks out along with Latre Darnhardt, who has a dozen points. Moore had that terrific first half where he had 14 points, six boards. Really good defensively, too. The thing that he has the ability to do, you know, it's 6 7. He literally, Chad, could guard any position on the floor. I mean, you don't want him against a bunch of 6, 10, or 6, 11 guys for multiple possessions necessarily inside. And, and, and maybe not a jet quick point guard up front, but from time to time on possessions here and there, more than capable. I mean, probably Oklahoma's most versatile defender because of that. Athletically, he's off the chart. He may be on a different chart when it comes to athleticism. Jalen Moore. And we've seen another one of those dunks tonight where his eyebrows are at the rim. Yeah, and this game was a little bit like that Iowa game where he had 18 points, you know, six or seven from the floor. A lot of similarities in terms of how he got his points tonight. Like that win against Iowa. Cooper misfiring in there. Joe French takes it back the other way for UAPB. Oklahoma with five players in double figures tonight. Nice little hesitation and crossover for Ware, but he can't finish. We talk about the Big 12 Conference. Oklahoma coming into the night, one of six teams in the Big 12 unbeaten. Got Baylor. Houston is going to be playing at Xavier tomorrow in that Big East Big 12 battle. BYU is unbeaten. Cincinnati and TCU also unbeaten early on this season, along with the Sooners. We have some interesting Big 12 games tomorrow night. Rick Patino goes to Morgantown. How about that. Yeah. St. John's at West Virginia. You mentioned that UConn Kansas game. The Trey Darthard able to free himself. He's got 14 tonight. That's just another piece. Yeah, and I think it was really good. Part of that 14 were those two threes that he hit. And as we've said, I mean, he has a career of proven ability to shoot it well from long range, but he hadn't shot it great yet. One of eight in San Diego. And I don't think you need to worry about him, but I know Porter Moser's, you know, you want to get him going a little bit where defenses have to worry about that three-point shot, and he can help stretch the floor for Yuzan and McCollum. 
10 for Williams tonight. He is one of four Golden Lions to reach double figures. It's like Jake Moser, the son of head coach Porter Moser, is going to see some playing time. He replaces Latre Dardhar. Brendan, so nice to see these players who contribute in practice a lot of times as members of the scout team. That's a critical role to play in a program, and Jake Moser, one of those. There's Jake. Fourth game in which he's played this year. He was born in Little Rock when Porter Moser was the head coach there. Max Kleins check lines up another. He's three for three at the line tonight. And the Sooners have hit the century mark. Nice check transfer from Houston Christian. He really elevated his portal stock. The last 10 ball games a year ago for Houston Christian, he averaged 23 a night. I like that that's a term now, his portal yeah. stock. <laughs> Williams buries a deep three for UAPB. Yeah, I don't know if that's a good thing or not. Well, I, I don't know if it's a good thing or not. Martin Jr. to French, Cooper over to block it, but a foul on Kleinschek underneath. With a minute 42 to play. I think there's a lot of positives that Solomon Bozeman can take back to Pine Bluff. You say they just gave up 100 plus points, but a lot of that is Oklahoma's playing well. And they're playing elite, the guard position, Uzan and McCollum, we talked a lot about it. Oklahoma's able to turn them over early and get those points off turnovers. But offensively, especially the second half, I mean, they figured some things out. They did. And they've scored 10 points more in the second half than they did in the first half. Actually, second half, it is 49 to 44, Oklahoma, so much closer. Kleins check. Moser. They run him off the three point line. And he goes right to the That's rim great. and scores it. That's great right there. <laughs> Much to the delight of the students. Now look at this ball fake. Ball fake. Both defenders go by, and then the strength right there absorbs a little contact. Jake kisses it off the window. And I look down at Coach Moser. Obviously, he makes no facial expression at all. But that'll be one that father and son can have fun with later on tonight. It's pretty, it will be. It's pretty awesome. And for a long time to come, you see Caden Cooper checking out as Reed Lovelace. The sophomore guard from Oklahoma City enters. See, if that's me, I, I tell my dad, I, I say, if I'm Jake, I say, hey, I'm one of the best finishers on the floor tonight. you got to get me more minutes. <laughs> and he gives it up to Klein's check this time for the lay-in. And, and now I'm distributing, setting up teammates. Man, his numbers per 40 minutes are going to be off the charts for Jake Moser tonight. There's Rashad Williams. And he's got 18. And that is his fifth made three in this game. You think this team doesn't have some firepower? I mean, Oklahoma can defend. And Pine Bluff still has 82. Kata, and that one is pinned in between the backboard and the rim. But a foul call. Yeah, yeah, Kata will now shoot. <laughs> foul is the second on the shot, Williams. Yeah, yeah, Kata, the native of Mali, and came over to the United States, grew up playing soccer, and moved to the United States before high school, and then the senior year of high school in St. Louis had a knee injury there. You mentioned the injury that he had in Missouri. He's had some injuries at Oklahoma. Just another piece that you might need somewhere down the Big 12 road. Northweather the rebound, Lovelace. The crowd's reaction says everything. I like that Northweather 
understood. I'm going to get Lovelace's shot right. The Northweather could have taken that back up himself. That was unselfish play. Help out a teammate. There's French. Baseline jumper. He has 14. Yaya Keita on the backside here. Gets the deuce. Sooners have scored 107 tonight. And back and forth we go. Most importantly, they have moved to 7-0 into the top 25 at number 25.